Hey, this is Lauren Zagiri with Motion Science and today I'm going to share with you five pro tips I use every day in my work as a professional motion designer. First, let me welcome you to the first episode of the Quick Tips and Better Workflow series, where I will showcase the tips and tricks that changed my motion design game. The first tip I have for you today is using shortcuts to speed up your workflow. If you don't have it already and want to follow along, I highly recommend downloading the FX console plugin by Video Copilot. What I see a lot in motion designers is that they use the control space shortcut to quickly search for effects. However, there is a hidden feature if you go into settings. Here in shortcuts, you can assign the effects that you use the most to numpad numbers. If I press OK, Back in our composition, if you press Control space, you can access those effects super easily. So here a blur, maybe a gradient, a fill, a level, hue saturation, you get the idea. Another underrated feature for FX console is screenshot comparison. Here, if I want to take a screenshot, I can press Control space, select the little camera, and right next to it, we have our gallery. If I open this gallery, we have all the screenshots we've taken for all our projects. Here, let's say we click on one image and want to compare it to another. I can control click and see them side by side. We can then compare type, composition, layouts, color, and do this with as many as four images. Here's three, here's four. This is very useful and I don't see a lot of people using this. If you want to export one of these screenshots, you can access the FX console plugin and the third icon, you can save it to a PNG, a JPEG, or just copy it to a clipboard and paste it into a Teams chat, for example. Up next, I will show you how to create organic looking vignettes. What I see a lot of people doing when it comes to vignettes is to simply add an adjustment layer with the CC vignette effect. This gives us a somewhat perfect look and it doesn't feel really organic, in my opinion. Here's a better way of doing it. You can create a solid and draw a mask around the portion of the image you want our focus to be on. This mask doesn't need to be perfect because the more organic it is, the better it will feel. You can then set this mask to subtract and play with the feathering. Here I used 496 pixels and play with the expansion a little bit. You can also tweak its opacity to get a desired look. When it comes to coloring vignettes, I never like to select a pure black color. So here I added a fill and I picked a very, very dark blue, basically one of the darkest color in my composition. To take this a step further, we're going to create a blurred vignette around the edges of our composition. To do this, I'm going to create a shape layer, add a gradient ramp to it, make the ramp shape radial, take this to the center maybe and play with the position of the end ramp. I'm then going to add a levels and play with the gamma. Whatever is black will be clear, whatever is white will be blurred. You can up the ramp scatter to get rid of any banding. And since our text is on the upper right corner, let's select the center and place it right here. It doesn't need to be perfect, something like this. I went ahead and hid our blur map layer. We named it to blur map. I created an adjustment layer with the camera lens blur effect. Under blur map, we can select our blur map layer with the effects and mask option selected. Here I use 25 just so we can see it, which is a little bit too much, but maybe 15, maybe 10. There. Here it's very subtle, but it makes a difference just so it's not as sharp around the edges. The third tip today is all about creating a soft glow to our composition. I went ahead and created an adjustment layer, renamed it to soft glow. I then added a fast box blur to it with the blur radius set to about 50 pixels. I set the blending mode to screen and this gives us a nice glow but it's a little bit too overpowering. If I press T for opacity, I can adjust its levels just like so. This takes the digital feel out of our composition, before, after. 
I usually try this trick in most of my projects. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I recommend experimenting with different looks and see what you can come up with. Our next tip today is all about creating some lens distortion to simulate what a camera does in real life. I went ahead and created an adjustment layer, renamed it Optics, and added the Optics Compensation effect. Here you can tweak the field of view up to create a fisheye effect. Let's keep this very subtle. To fix the edges, we can add a transform effect and scalar composition by 2%. This makes our text a little less digital and adds some subtle distortion. We can also create the opposite effect by first disabling our transform effect and clicking reverse lens distortion. Tip number five is all about tweaking values mathematically. What I mean by this is, let's say here we have all our adjustment layer we've created today and let's say we found the blur vignette to be a little too much what i mean by tweaking values mathematically is that you can use mathematical operators in every field in after effects so let's say 25 is too much we can say i want it by half as much so you can divide it by two and maybe a little more so plus five and i usually tackle uh every value i change using this method let's say the glow is a little too much and press the opacity and say maybe three times less so divided by three maybe five times more so times five and this is how i proceed to tweak values now to wrap up this video let's take a look at what we've done one more time we started off by having an image some text and a look applied to it we then created a vignette manually by creating a mask, adjusting its feather and expansion. We then created a blur map for blurred edges and apply an adjustment layer with our camera lens blur effect and our blur map selected. We then went ahead, created a new adjustment layer with a fast box blur set to around 50 and our layer to screen. We tweaked its opacity to create a soft haze on top of our composition. To create some lens distortion, we created a new adjustment layer, applied the optics compensation effect, and fixed our comp edges with the transform effect. Let's use our screenshot comparison trick to compare the before and after. Here is the before, here is the after. I like this one much better. I hope you liked this video as much as I loved teaching it. If you learned something new or want to share your own tips, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, this is Lauren Zagary with Motion Science.